Hello, I'm Sharon Hunt and I am a groomer at Kelly Murphy's Doggy Delights and this is Nancy Brinkat who is one of our apprentices and today she's going to be grooming Yaz, a Pomeranian who is not quite breed standard but um, one of our clients and Nancy is going to be scissoring today. So I'm going to hand it over to Nancy so that she can explain exactly what she's going to be doing. Um, today I'm going to be doing a hand scissor on Yaz. Um, she is normally clipped, but for the purpose of this video, um, we've changed it to hand scissoring now, which I believe the owner prefers anyway. Um, I'm going to start from the back end, start by scissoring that, and then I'm going to work my way forward, scissoring against the coat just to get a bit of a nicer finish. Um, then I'm going to work down the front of her legs, um, tidy her head, tidy her towel, and just sort of get her looking presentable but manageable for the owners. Uh, she is a pub dog, so they like to have her quite short. They don't really do much grooming, so the shorter the better for them, really. And I'm just going to try and sort of get her to fit what they like but looking tidy and presentable with it. pom that I've uh, been grooming today. The first pom was actually a clipped pom um, and I started by scissoring the body, no, clipping the body and then scissoring the legs. Um, but because she's a hand scissor I'm going to do it a little bit different. With the hand scissors I normally start from the foot on the back leg, work my way up. So today I'm going to be starting with this, like the back leg rather than the body. I'm going to start on the underfoot. Tidying it all round, giving it a nice sort of rounded underfoot, just to give my basic shape from the top. Obviously, being like a pub dog, um, there's bound to be stuff all on the floor. Just want to make sure that she's not going to get anything stuck to her, all the hair in between her pads. And then I'm going to round the foot. And then I'm going to hold the foot up and do the in-between toes. Put my finger in between her pads just to open them up. Yaz has already been prepped today. She's been bathed and dried and then prep work done. Um, the shampoo that we used on Yaz today is Wild Wash's shampoo for light coats, which is lemon, lime and chamomile. Um, as she has a light coat, we thought this would be the best shampoo to use on her. Um, she is a pub dog. So she does normally smell um, quite bad. So the Wild Wash shampoo has a really citrusy, like sort of fresh smell. So that's worked really well on her, giving her a nice sort of nice scent back to her for a couple of hours. <laughs> okay. So now that my foot's done, I'm going to go to the back of the hock and I'm going to clear all of this. Choose my straights and go directly down the hock. All the way round. So because of the breed standard of the pom, normally they wouldn't be... No, normally you don't touch a pom, you just sort of tidy the feet. Um, the coat doesn't actually get touched, but obviously being a pub dog... Um, stand up, look girl. Being yes. a pub dog, um, it's just going to be a lot more manageable for the owners. So straight down the back. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by shaping all of this. I'm going to go between my feathers and my straights, um, depending on what part of the leg I'm doing. Um, and then I'm going to work my way up against the coat. I'll just comb it all up. And then I'm sort of where she has been clipped prior to um, being hand scissored, she has actually grown back 
in all sort of like odds and sods that where Pomeranians aren't meant to be clipped, um, but she has, it's sort of ruined her coat and she has like bald places here and here. So what I'm going to do, just to sort of blend it all in, I'm going to go to the length of this. I'll take the ends off of this, but the whole coat will be sort of all the same length all over, blending it in so that you don't actually notice as much. Take the bulk off. I'm just going to graduate my thinners so that they're on a nice angle. It's not over exaggerated and it's not going completely flat. Still going to give her a bit of angulation in there. I've took the most off up here just to see sort of where I'm going to. I did that with my thinners because I didn't want to go straight in with my straights just in case it was too, too much. So because I've took the weight off, now I'm going to go in with my straights just to give it a bit of a nicer finish. And I find it easier to work with straights anyway. So, I mean, for me, I'd use these for everything, whereas some people might prefer to use their thinners. But I suppose that's down to the individual. shaping around her bum. I don't want it to be too big, but um, still going to have some shaping in there. Stand up, little girl. Okay. Just combing it up, making sure that it's all level. Most of the videos that I've actually seen on hands and poms have been with um, your thinners. I don't actually think I've seen one <laughs> used with straights. Um, but as I say, I just find them so much easier to work with. And I feel like I get a nicer finish when I use my straights. I think it's because I work with them better, I just sort of know how to use them, in a sense. So you get the effect, the effect that you want. Yeah, to make a lot of the... look its best. And a lot of the work that I sort of should use thinners on, I don't. I use, I use my straights and so far... It's turned out okay anyway. I mean, if she was a lot fidgety, like more fidgety than she, like just sitting, at, like trying to sit down, standing up, then I probably would use my fingers a lot more because I don't want to sort of go to cut and then she like exactly. moves and then completely like screw it up. Good girl. Good girl. But coming it up. Do you find that the scissoring takes longer than the clipping? Um, to be honest, I, it normally takes me a lot longer to do one side than the other side. Once I know what I'm doing and what sort of shape I'm going for, the other side I tend to go through a lot quicker. But it's finding what I actually want it to look like. That's my biggest problem. I mean, obviously, this would take a lot longer than clipping anyway but I think when I do clipping because I'm so sort of precise with how I want it it's gonna it takes me forever anyway because I'm constantly going over it to make sure that it's all even so I, I'd say it takes longer on the body but everything else I spend just as much time on anyway mm -hmm. I don't want it to go too short on the legs I don't want it to be the same length all over I think Having a bit of a bigger leg than the body tends to look nicer anyway. Um, but I just want to sort of shape them. I'm not going to do too much from the front because I don't want it to go sort of too short. So I'm just going to take the ends off of here 
Whereas this, I'm going to do a bit more shaping. I'm going to sort of go in and then out a bit just to sort of give you your angulation and just make it look... And she's quite a long bodied yeah. pom. She is, yeah, she is quite oversized <laughs> um, <laughs> compared to a lot of poms that we see. Um, so you don't want her to look out of balance? Yeah, I don't want her to look sort of really skinny legs. I think by wide, like, widening them, she'll look a bit more in proportion, whereas if they're smaller, they're just going to look too small for her body. Mm -hmm. So I'm not doing too much with them, to be honest. So I'm going to use my curve just to sort of give me that the proper angulation because obviously as they're curved you can go with the like the natural shaping of the dog's legs anyway so I'll sort of use them that way to sort of give you that rounded bum and then I'll turn them around and use them the other way to sort of give you the sort of S line that you're looking for. So now I'm just going to get all of this out of the inside leg using my comb, just pull it all out. Um, on her, I'm using a different comb compared to when I did the clipped palm. I'm using a comb that's got longer teeth just so that I can get right underneath and pull it all up and stretch the hair out as much as I can. Whereas with the clipped palm, you don't need to do that because you're just taking it to the length of the, of the comb attachment that you're that you're using. Hey, 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 stand up. Being a pub dog, she um, gets fed a lot of scraps from the customers um, and occasionally she does come in where she needs to have a bath because she's had an upset stomach. So we want to take this really nice and short and just keep it as clean as possible for her. And I mean, I don't want to shave it. If I was going to shave it, I'd use like the Arco or something, but I just want to scissor it. I don't want it to be scalped. I just want it short enough but not scalped i just want it to look tidy and neat and then i'm just going to shape sort of the flank area now just so it looks like how it will do and that way you can sort of shape the leg into it rather than shape the leg and then do it because then Chances are you're probably going to have to reshape it anyway. So I'm just literally pulling it forward. I mean, I can see the flank through the hair is there. Um, I'm not going right to it. I don't want it to sort of look like she's too like she's tucked. tucked up. I want it just to sort of look natural. And then I'm just going to come from the front and do the inside leg. Again, just comb it all out so you know what you're working with. And then I'll just use my curves again just to get on the inside. I'm going to just hold her leg up just so I can come from the front and get my scissors in there. It's a good thing about straights and fit the curves.
with most dogs that get clipped, I tend to do both back legs first. So I'll start on one, go to the other, and then do the front legs as the body's already clipped. Um, because she's a hand scissor, um, with the scissoring dogs that I do, I tend to do a back leg first and then work my way forward with the dog. So I'll go against the coat and then do one whole side first. And then that way, that's my sort of comparison for the other side rather than sort of doing too much at once and then having to go backwards and forwards. I'd rather get one side all completely done. And also by that, because I know then what I'm sort of looking for, the other side is just so much quicker and easier to get through rather than sort of trying to match up then thinking about the next thing. Good girl. Good girl. So right now I'm going to start by um, scissoring the body. Oh, is that itchy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll start again by using my thinners and then I'll go to the straights. I just want to sort of get a section of it at the length I want and then I'll be able to go in with my straights. So I'm going against the coat, sort of like on a reverse clip how you get that sort of smoother, nicer finish to it. Um, I find you get the same when you're scissoring. So again, just with a... Um, a little bald patch, I'm just going to scissor along with that so it's the same length. So you're blending it in? Yeah, just so it's not so obvious if you was just to look at it. Take a bit of the weight off of it because it's, it's not actually bald, it's just shorter than the rest of the coat when it grows back. Um, but it's, it is actually really thick. So I just want to sort of thin it out a bit. Again, make it look less, yeah, less obvious and blend it in. All right, so now I'm going to go in with my straights or my curves. Um, I'm going to go over the same bit that I just did and then work my way forward. Um, combing up, is that itchy? Good girl, good girl. Yeah, I'll go straight down the back as I would if I was clipping, um, straight down and then round. But obviously I'll go straight up and up, like round, but sort of reversed again on the body. Mm -hmm. So again, the next bit, I'm going to take the weight off with my thinners and then scissor over with my straights to get that smoother finish. I find by, because you're sort of going against the coat, if you sort of stretch the skin out, it stands up more. So it's easier to sort of see where you're scissoring. Rather than down there, you're just sort of... It's the wrong angle. Yeah, yeah, totally wrong angle. Whereas that, I mean, she's got sort of loads of skin, <laughs> so you can stretch it right round anyway. Right, so I've scissored the back leg um, and worked my way up one side of the body. Um, I'm leaving all this for a minute just because I'm going to scissor that all into the neck to blend it and I just wanted to focus mainly on the body for now. Um, I'm going to now, like the skirt bit, um, she doesn't have a skirt, but I'm just going to use my thinners and my straights just to um, tidy that round into a sort of a skirt but just nice and short. So just lifting her leg up as if I was doing a skirt and I'm just going to thin it all up. Again, just to take the weight off with my thinners and then I'll go over it with my straights just to give it that sort of more of a crisp finish. 
And then I'll just do the one half for now, and then when I go to the other side, I'll do the other side of the skirt. So that's that. And then obviously all the bits on the other side I'll get when I go around to the other side. Um, now I'm going to start on the front leg and I'm going to do that exactly the same as the back leg. So rounding down the foot, do the in-between toes, round your foot and then um, just shaping all her feathers. Right, so now that I've rounded the foot I'm just going to start to shape all of her feathers. Um, I'm going to hold the leg forward and straight just so that I know what shape I'm going for. I'm going to start with my small straights and just trim all this quite short. And then I'm going to grab my thinners and start working my way up the leg. I'm taking up a little bit at a time and then I'll check it and then if I think there needs to be more, I'll just hold the leg back up and do more. I'd rather take off too little than too much. Now I'm just starting to sort of flatten it in line with the leg. So that when you look forward at it, it just goes straight down rather than out. And what's the position of the dog's leg? The, dog, um, the dog's leg is actually in the normal position as though it walks on forward rather than turned out to the side, which would be quite uncomfortable. And I'm going to put it down and have a look at it. Um, you can see that this needs to come off more at the top and a bit tighter at the bottom. How many years? Good girl. combing it straight down the back and slightly rounded into the foot. I don't want it to be too rounded because then she's going to look like she's got bowed legs. And take that nice and straight. And then just so that the inside's done as well, I'm going to Got a bit more rounded so you don't get that sort of double layer effect. And comb it. And then I'm going to come from the inside and take that nice and tight. Good girl, stand up. Good girl. I'm going to hold the leg up. I'll come from around this side. Good girl, yes. I'm going to hold the leg up to the front and then I can get in there with my thinners. See, see that bit there? It's right at the top. Do a final check. Um, right, all that's left now on the front leg is a few little hairs that are poking out of the front. I'm just going to thin those off in line with the length of the rest of the hair. Um, 
then that's all going to be finished for now. I'm going to leave all this till the end when I'm blending in the head with the neck. And once that's, that front leg's done, I'm going to finish off the other side. Right, now all the body and the legs is, uh, are scissored up, I'm going to start on the head and the neck. Um, I'm going to start from right at the base of the neck, where it's all long. I'm going to take a bit of that off and then I'm going to go from the head down into the body. So I'm going to sort of graduate it, so I'm going to take less off at the top and more off at the bottom. And then this is going to sort of gradually come round, just taking the ends off so it all blends in. And then from here I'm just going to blend all of the head, but the, the, what would you call it? All of the chin in with the chest, going round between the legs and into the front legs. And comb it off. And holding her head down, I'm just going to put my scissors straight, just taking the ends off. I don't want to take too much off. I just sort of want a steady slope into the neck. And then a little bit less. And again with this, I'm just going to take the most off with my thinners and then go over it with my straights and my curves after just to get a bit of a nicer finish. Good girl, yes. So I'm using my curves on the underside, so I'm using the actual curved part just to sort of blend the neck in. So what I'm doing here is just because where she's got these rolls is sitting quite thick and making the coat sort of stick out. So I'm literally stretching it open so that that thicker, longer hair, I can just take the ends off and then it'll sit much flatter against the rest of the coat. And it'll look a bit smoother. But I mean, you can't really do much about that. <laughs> she has got quite few there. Just blend it all in straight into the legs. Right now that I've blended the back of the neck. I'm going to start from going into the, from the face into the neck. Just taking off a little bit of time. Trying not to get any sort of steps. Good girl. I'm just going to do a final little bit of blending and then I'm going to start on the other side. Right, all that we've got left to do now on yours is her towel. Um, whilst combing out, we, um, we noticed that she's got a little sore on the underside of her towel. Um, it looks quite irritated and she's got a little bit of a scab there. Um, throughout grooming, you should be checking the dog all over, making sure that if you come across anything, that you make, like you're aware of it, and that when the owner comes to collect the dog, you make them aware of it and see what, what just... 
just so that they're aware in yeah. case they need to take them to the yeah, vets. Yeah, make sure um, to keep an eye on it, see if it gets worse or see if they already knew about it and just see whether they're going to take the dog to the vets to get any treatment if they feel necessary. And you, the other place that you'll also find any problems is when you're bathing. Yeah, during the bathing and drying process you, um, you tend to find a lot of the problems here because obviously you're feeling the dog all over, you feel if they've got any lumps and bumps. Also when you're blasting, like to dry, where the hair separates, you can see if there's any scratches or anything on the skin a lot more rather than where, whether you was just clipping or combing, for example. Um, with Yaz, we're going to do a fan tail. She normally has a fan tail, but we're just going to take a bit of extra care around there, take that quite short where the scab is, but making sure that we don't irritate the area. I'm going to start by removing all the excess hair from around the tail. Make that nice and tight. Over the top. And the other side. Stand up, good girl. Good girl, stand. And then we just want to take all this as short as we can get it. So being careful around that area. Then once that's done, we're going to just make sure it's all combed out. And we're going to go to the table, take the end off, and then grab the tailbone and brush the hair down either side. And then we can do the fan. Starting from the back, working your way forward and coming up slightly at the front. Then I'm going to come this side and do this side. Making sure the tail is straight in line with the dog's back and that you're at eye level with it. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to come to the back and make sure there's no bits that have been missed. And then right at the end, I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy with everything. There's a bit here that I've noticed is a bit longer, so I'm just going to grab my fillers on that. Just making sure I'm happy with the ground. Right, so this is the finished product. Um, this is Jazz, so we had the full hand scissor. Um, we started off by the back leg, scissoring them, scissoring up the coat, into the upper part of the body which went into the neck and the front legs. Um, we did a fan towel. She was previously washed in wild wash shampoo um, for light coloured dogs. Um, I feel it's worked really well on her. Um, being a pub dog, it's just that citrusy smell just makes it seem so much more fresher and cleaner. Um, I'd recommend her coming back for a full hand scissor at least once a month. Um, being a pub dog as well, she's going to want to be kept shorter, obviously to prevent the hair going everywhere. Um, so, this is it. <laughs>